thanks for joining this video today. So today we are going to talk about the GBLG1 closed loop system, which is also known as the Diaboop system. And for the first time, I will share the results of the French pre-launch of the system after a six months follow-up of 25 patients with type 1 diabetes. I am Dr. Coralie Amadou, and I present these results on behalf of the Diaboop Consortium. I have to mention an ad hoc consulting agreement for this presentation. So in previous clinical trials, the GPLG1 closed loop system was associated with a significant glucose control improvement and a significant reduction of time spent below range or in hypoglycemia. And in one of those clinical trials, the system has also been tested in really real uh, challenging real-life situations, like for example, in patients exposed to gastronomic dinners. And once again, the system showed its superiority versus conventional insulin pump. So, beyond safety and efficacy of the system that were previously validated, the goal here was to assess the real-life use of the system in really real-life conditions. And this was done on a population of 25 patients with type 1 diabetes already using a conventional insulin pump and a glucose monitoring device. So the exclusion criteria were age under 22 years old, pregnancy, and a total daily dose of insulin under 8 or above 90 units per day. The primary outcome was the time spent in range according to international guidelines and the secondary outcomes were HbA1c, time spent below range and of course safety of the system. So the system included an insulin pump, Kaleido insulin pump, a continuous glucose monitoring with Dexcom G6 and of course a terminal running the algorithm. So after an open loop period of one to two weeks, which was the control period, the system was initiated in closed loop. Data were collected on a cloud platform called Your Loops and were retrospectively collected in two centers of this French pre-launch. So here are the characteristics of our patients. So the mean age was 43 years old with a mean duration of diabetes of 19 years. 76% of those patients were women and at baseline the mean HbA1c was 7.9% and the mean percentage of time spent in range was 53%. So here you can see the individual trajectories for the primary outcomes, time spent in range. So notice that at baseline only two patients were in the recommended target and after six months there were 14 to be in it. So the mean percentage of time spent in range significantly improved from 52.5% to 69.7%. And in the meantime, the HbA1c significantly decreased from 7.9 to 7.1%. For the time spent below range, the total time spent below 70 mg per deciliter significantly decreased from 2.4 to 1.3%. The time spent below 54 mg per deciliter didn't significantly decrease and the BMI and total daily insulin dose didn't significantly change over the period. Finally, for safety, only one patient decided to stop using the system after two months because of repeated disconnections and therefore this patient was not included in the six-month analysis. For the percentage of time spent in closed loop, in total time this percentage was 85% and when looking only when the Dexcom G6 was operating this percentage was 92%. In our center in Corbeil-Essonne, one half of our patients had to change their Dexcom sensor at least once before the scheduled date 
and one quarter of our patients had to change their Kaleido pump. No severe adverse events occurred and none of these events required any medical intervention or hospitalization. To conclude, this is the second report of a hybrid closed loop system after those of metonic closed loop system. Only one patient decided to stop the system over the six months period. Glycemic control significantly improved with no serious adverse events. So this pre-launch confirm the safety, reliability and efficiency of the GBLG1 closed loop system. Hello, my dear colleagues. I'm very happy to show you the results of an exciting trial that we started about one year ago. We want to address the difficult question of a patient with a very severe type 1 diabetes. And we know that these patients can be treated either by insulin pumps with a predictive low glucose system feature or by a pancreatic islet transplantation. What we want to address in this trial is the place of closed-loop insulin delivery. So this is the conflicts of interest that I want to disclose. And this is the scope of uh, what we want to talk about today. This is a patient with very uncontrolled type 1 uh, diabetes with problematic hypoglycemia. We know that uh, these uh, problematic hypoglycemia problems can be addressed either by uh, therapeutic education, by use the use of CGM, by the use of a PLGS pump or by islet transmutation. All these four therapeutic strategies have been validated by uh, phase three clinical trials performed during the past three years. But what we don't know is the place of closed loop insulin therapy, which so far uh, has not been studied except in one study. And uh, the question is, can we address the problem of highly unstable type 1 diabetes uh, in patients that are contraindicated for pancreatic islet transplantation with a closed loop insulin therapy. So uh, this trial was a head-to-head -head comparison of a DBLHU system, which is our uh, closed loop insulin solution, and we compare this solution with uh, a state-of-the-art PLGS system, namely the SmartGuard Medtronic insulin pump. We decided to include patients with type 1 diabetes that were already on pump therapy and patients that presented with very, very severe glucose instability, making them eligible for pancreatic islet transplantation. The criteria were severe hypoglycemic episode during the past year, hypo-unawareness, or very high glucose viability. All these patients had been considered for islet transplantation, but were contraindicated or refused the transplantation. The DBLHU system is composed of a insulin pump, a spatch pump from Kaleido, a glucose sensor, the Dexcom G6, and a common module where the patients would enter the meals or the physical activities. The algorithm was based upon the uh, DBLG1 system, which we had previously validated, and we know that this system can be tuned according to the physiology of the patient. So there are some uh, public settings from the DBLG1, and there are some hidden settings that can specifically address the physiology of patients with unstable type 1 diabetes. The design of the study was a series of N of 1 trials, namely patients would go through, through a succession of periods of four weeks each, either in closed loop or in open loop in a randomized fashion. So the total duration of the trial was 16 weeks. Here are the results. We have shown that DBLHU is very efficient. 
You can see here the individual results of the seven patients and you could see a huge improvement in the time in range ranging from 11% to up to 50% in difference in absolute uh, uh, values. This slide shows you the aggregated results of the seven patients. In red, the control treatment with uh, PLGS, and in blue, the experimental system with DBLHU. When we look at the figures, we can see that the time in optimal range jumped from 43% in the control group to 73%, so a nearly 30% in absolute uh, level of improvement. We have a reduction in the average sensor glucose by 35 mg per deciliter. We also have a dramatic reduction in the glucose uh, variability indices, and we have an improvement in the glucose management indicator. Patients were very satisfied with the system. This is shown by the results of the questionnaire DTSQ. And the patient had a, a, re, a redu reduction in the perceived frequency of hypoglycemia. We also looked at the usability of the system. And it happened that the patients were very uh, at ease uh, using the DBLHU system. It happened that uh, the French regulatory agency was aware of the results of this trial and uh, it's approved the compassionate use of the DBL2 system in four other patients also facing very unstable type 1 diabetes. Uh, here are the results of one patient. This is the uh, CGM data from open loop period, so very unstable uh, diabetes. And this is what we can immediately observe following the uh, closing of the loop with a nearly 84% of time in good range and a dramatic improvement in the glucose variability. So to conclude, we can say that patients with very severe, highly unstable type 1 diabetes can be efficiently treated uh, with closed-loop insulin delivery, which could replace PLGL system. I would like to thank all the uh, collaborators that uh, were involved in this very exciting trial. Hello, I'm Eric Koniker, co-founder of Dimeloop. Dimeloop started in 2015. Guillaume Charpentier, diabetologist, had been uh, working within his nonprofit, bringing together patients and doctors to try to get a first version of a closed loop working. Um, and he came to me in 2015. And that came together with a company that today we're 85 people and we're ready to launch our commercial um, release across Europe with reimbursement undergo undergoing in France in Germany. So what do we do? We do a closed loop for people living with type 1 uh, diabetes. So we take a CGM, an insulin pump, both off the shelf uh, with partners that we work with. And we have a handset, DBLG1, that links both of them together and makes a decision every five minutes autonomously. Complex algorithm, complex algorithms because the system needs to be simple for the user, efficient, and also personalized, because every person has a different life, different lifestyle, different physiology, different preferences. The algorithms behind it, first of all, you have a safety layer. Is there a risk of hypoglycemia? What do we need to do there? Then you have the really complex part of machine learning uh, within a physiological framework that's going to look at the past, do the machine learning to forecast both insulin needs and glucose levels. But machine learning sometimes isn't perfect. So we have a supervisor, which is a patented technology, that is going to look, is the machine learning reliable? And if not, hand it over to an expert system that is mimicking what a diabetologist or an expert patient would be doing. Then you have a self-learning layer that's going to be looking at weeks worth of data 
to look at each patient's own rhythms. Week versus weekend, breakfast versus dinner, night versus day. So does it work? Yes, it works great. We've got in the pivotal clinical trial, time and range improvement of 14% in the randomized clinical trial. In real life, plus 18% versus the same patients before. Hypoglycemia divided by three. Those numbers are great, but that's not really what matters. What really matters is the feedback from the users that tell us, you know, I can live my life um, much closer without having to think about diabetes as much. I can eat like my kids. I can go on holiday things with spouses, kids, whatever. Um, and that's what really what matters. Where are we going? First of all, we're going to have additional indications. Highly unstable diabetes, that's been discussed uh, separately. Children, uh, 6 to 12 years old, clinical trial with outstanding feedback from both uh, the parents and the doctors. Teens with specific needs um, regarding that specific category of age. From a functionality, the ability not having to declare meals. So for us, that's really fundamental that sometimes you don't have to declare a meal. You can if you want to really have results that are as great as possible. But sometimes your own priority is living a life. Um, hormonal effects, menstrual cycle, of course, but also stress and other hormones that we're going to include into the algorithm. And then um, evolution on short-term insulin sensitivity. From a product perspective, focus on user experience, iterate and keep iterating on that, make it as easy as, as possible to use and fit for everyone's life. Interoperability and then additional devices, because again, some people really would want to have it on a smartwatch or others want it on a bigger screen. Interoperability, what does that mean? That means, first of all, choice. So our system will has linked up to three pumps Salnova pump, Dana I, and then the Kaleido pump. And we're in the process of integrating at least two more pumps. And so that will give people choice to wear one pump versus another because that's what they want, or in certain countries because they don't have a choice because the reimbursement setup system is set up that way. Unannounced meals. Rather than making bid discourses, there's one person she has an extremely demanding job. She's got three kids. And this is real life data that I'm showing you, not in a clinical trial. Her focus is really spending as little time on diabetes as possible and focusing on her job that she's passionate about and on her children. So the first line shows a day, that's a decent day, 57% time in range, no hypos, average glucose, that's okay, no time spent announcing meals or calculating, that's actually a quite decent day. Surprisingly, that's actually really far from being the best day that the DBLG1 system can achieve for unannounced meals. In this particular case, this person had two meals, 80% time and range, 148 milligrams average glucose level, no hypos. And that's really what it's all about. She can spend her time on her priorities as she wants to. Thank you very much.